um, disillusioned or think that you're the only one who ever uh, feels like, shoot, I need to work on my pronunciation. We've got a little cute video. I'm only going to show you parts of this. It's going to show you how difficult it is for people really on the opposite end. The people trying to learn English from having Spanish as a native tongue. And, you know, sometimes there are uh, Sometimes there is a school of, of thought that you shouldn't focus too much on pronunciation to the exclusion of learning your vocabulary, to the exclusion of, you know, not trying. Oh, I won't try because I have difficulties with pronunciation. Never feel that way. But you should attempt to get it right because sometimes, as we know with Spanish, you know, and, and really even with English, if you mess up one sound, sometimes it can morph into a different word. And sometimes that can be problematic, not often, but sometimes. So um, we're gonna see from the opposite end that you're not the only one who has that sort of problem. We're gonna take a quick look at a few things off of this video. Um, okay. Oh, and Momentito, I need to put my share screen on. Got, sorry, guys, otherwise you can't see it or hear it at all. Okay. Porque vamos a ver otras personas sufriendo, aprendiendo un idioma. Hoy tenemos... Other people suffering learning a language. Okay, so you're not alone. Cinco personas que van a hablar en inglés. Y esos son personas que son hispanohablantes de Colombia. No vamos a aprender mucho gramática. Tú vas a reír conmigo averiguando estas cinco personas sufriendo, aprendiendo inglés. Porque lo que queremos mostrar es que de aprender un idioma es muy difícil. Como puedes notar, yo no soy perfecto, pero poco a poco vamos a avanzar. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Santiago. Soy uno de los primos de Andrea. Algunos ya me han visto en, algún, en algunos videos, entonces hoy voy a pronunciar unas palabras en inglés a ver qué tal me va. Hola, soy Paula. Hola amigos, yo soy Miguel y voy a pronunciar algunas palabras en inglés. Espero que se diviertan. Hola, soy Valentina, la hermana de Andrea y hoy voy a pronunciar unas palabras en inglés. Hola, ¿qué tal amigos? Soy Daniel, soy primo de Andrea y voy a asumir el reto de pronunciar algunas palabras. Vamos a ver cómo nos va. Culture. 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 Oh, Dios, you know. Culture. 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 Sheep. What? Sheep. 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 Cheap. 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 Yeah, cheap. <laughs> Infrastructure. It's a palabra muy difícil. Infrastructure. No, hold on. You didn't say it right. <laughs> Infrastructure. Hold on, hold on. I got it. I got it. Infrastructure. Infras. Infrastructure. 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 I know. Infrastructure. 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 Unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately. 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 Fortnightly. No, no. Unfortunately. 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 No, Miguel, es que me trago mucho y yo me pongo muy nerviosa. No. 
unfortunate. Unfortunate. ¿Qué chavo, Miguel? Dígame cómo se dice eso. Next one, please. Schedule. Uy, no. Echadul. Echadul. Schedule. Es chudel. Es chudel. Es chudel. Es Es chi. Es chudel. Es chi. Es chudel. <laughs> I don't know. Choir? Yeah, choir. A heavenly choir. No choir. one uses that word. The word choir. <laughs> no, it's core. Cho no, it's. No, that's choir. Well, cho <laughs> is it choir? Of course it's choir. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're know. right, you're right. It is. It is. He doesn't know. You're right, you're right. Nate doesn't know. Que mal inglés. Show it. Choi, 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 Squirrel, Squire, Squire, ¿Cómo es? Skyrim, 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 no, es Squire, Squire. Pues es que no es. Es cual. Algo así. No sé. Es Es. Es cual. No me aburre. Literature. Literatura. 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 No. Literatura. No, no sé. No, no, no sé. Literatura, no. No, no, siguiente. Uy. Esta. Literatura. 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 Passionate. 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 Mischievous. 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 Like, no sé. Hmm. My Shebius. My Shebius. Mitsubius. 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 Qué mal inglés. Appearance. 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 Eso es appearance. Algo así. A billion. Okay. Pueden ver, you can see how tough that is. Um, and actually, some of those things that they're mispronouncing, I will be able to tell what they were saying. There are some mistakes they make that are very, very typical of the... Um, the Spanish speaker learning uh, English. Okay, por ejemplo, for example, ooh, can I make this, uh, you know, anything? And boy, this looks like a kindergartner trying to write, so I haven't figured out how to find my, uh, I know there's supposed to be a keyboard up here. Whiteboard, wow. Where's my thing to write? Well, anyway, 
anything that starts with SC in English would have to become ESC. So, you know, um, scope, they would want to pronounce as a scope. School is school. And even when they pronounce school correctly, you'll often hear the teeniest, tiniest school, a school. Okay? SC and SP cannot start a word in Spanish. But ESC and ESP can. So when you hear, uh, when they learn the word Spanish, the English word Spanish, Spanish, they want to say Spanish. It's, it's, it's Spanish. You'll hear the teeniest, tiniest E quite often with them because this is what they're, you know, just that's the way their brains are programmed. You can't say sp space or Spanish, Spanish. So they have things pre-wired into their brains like we have things pre-wired into our brains. Notice how hard it was for them to say the word schedule. But a lot of people could get appearance. A lot of people could get pretty close with literature. Where I thought they would have an easier time, uh, but didn't necessarily was with um, culture. That thing of going to culture into English, you know, cultura. In Espanol, cultura. It's not that far off, cultura. But, you know, the pronunciation is different. When they see C U L T U R, T U R E is like, what do I do with that? You know, cultura. So you're not the only ones <laughs> are challenged sometimes with, um, with pronunciation. Uh, we're going to take a look uh, today at talking about uh, this thing. And I'm going to put it all in caps in the chat section. Uh, section. Recuerdos. 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 We did this because uh, for a lot of you, that R is a real challenge, isn't it? The Spanish R. It is. That's got a strong R at the beginning, re, re, and a softer, not as strongly trilled R, a, a minor trill in the second R, recuerdos, recuerdo, recuerdo, recuerdo son souvenirs. Hopefully you brought a souvenir to talk about. Un recuerdo, recuerdo a comes from the word for recordar. Recordar en español is to remember. Recordar. Uh, so when we turn it into a noun, recuerdo could be a memory. Recuerdo, well, your souvenir is a memory. It's a memory. It's something that jogs your memory. It reminds you of a place you have been. Un recuerdo. And we even took our, I think souvenir comes from French, actually, in English. Which is like, yeah, that same thing. Souvenir is something that reminds you of a place. Un recuerdo. So what I ask you to do, and maybe not all of you did it. That's okay if you didn't. But if you did, make sure you've got your item handy. Voy, voy a empezar. Voy a empezar. I'm going to begin. Voy a empezar. Voy a darles. I'm going to give you guys. The less at the end of that is you guys. Voy a darles. I'm going to give you. But voy a darles mi ejemplo, mi ejemplo de mi recuerdo favorito. Mi recuerdo favorito. Este, este es, es un recuerdo de Granada. La ciudad de Granada en España. Es mi recuerdo favorito. Es mi recuerdo favorito que es, es, Una caja. Es una caja. It's a, it's a box. Es una caja de Granada en el sur de España. En de, es de Andalucía, la región que se llama Andalucía en el sur de España. 
como Arizona está en el sur de Estados Unidos, Texas está en el sur de los Estados Unidos, uh, la Florida está en el sur de Estados Unidos, uh, Granada está en el sur de España, el sur, south. ¿Entienden? Ok, entonces, uh, es una caja de madera. Es de madera, madera. Es de madera, it's made out of wood, es de madera. Y tiene diseños muy especiales, diseños de la cultura árabe. Porque la cultura árabe tenía mucha influencia en el sur de España. Los diseños, los diseños geométricos, los diseños geométricos en esta caja son importantes porque tienen la influencia de la cultura árabe en España hace muchos años, very long ago, ¿verdad? Y uh, es, es algo muy típico del arte Uh, de la influencia árabe en el arte de España. ¿Ok? Está bien. Bueno, ok. Uh, ¿Quién tiene algo? Who's got something who would like to start? I can start. Muy bien, Nora. <laughs> Empieza, Nora. Dinos, tell us something. Ok, let me grab it real quick. And do not be afraid to mispronounce just Say your piece. Okay. Okay. I've got to get my cheat notes out too. <laughs> bien, está bien. No tengan miedo. No be... um, este es un artículo de porcelana que comprende en San Francisco. Estaba en un viaje de negocios. Es un flautista asiático y está hecho en. España por Yadro. Oh, Yadro, muy famoso. <laughs> Yadro, escultura, sculptures. Muy bien. Ah, una flautista, a flute player. Sí. sí. Y un viaje de negocios would be a business trip. Sí. Sí, las esculturas de Yadro son muy famosas, ¿verdad? Y, y cuestan mucho. They cost quite a bit. ¿Verdad? Sí. sí but ¿Verdad? It... Sí. Uh, pero son esculturas de piedra. They're made out of stone. Ah, no sé, cerámica. No, cerámica. Más bien cerámica, ¿verdad? Uh, um, I, I said porcelana. Porcelana, sí. Porcelana, porcelana es porcelain. Mm -hmm. Sí. Uh, porcelana es un tipo de cerámica muy especial. Uh, muy bien. Ok, hiciste bien. Me gusta, Nora. Me gusta mucho, Nora. Hiciste bien. You did well. Ok. Uh, ¿Quién tiene algo más? Who's got something else? I've got something. Cynthia, dinos. Vale. Uh, me gusta ir de vacaciones y me gusta comprar Recuerdos. Este es <laughs> mi recuerdo favorito de China. Yo compro en la pared muy grande de China. ¿Cómo llamas a este sombrero? Un sombrero asitica? Un sombrero para el sol? Uh, el sombrero de en aero? No sé. Un sombrero es difícil de empricar en <laughs> mi paleta. Hecho de bambú y no se dobla. No se doble, it does not fold. Entonces, 
Aura compro lapices para recuerdos. Ah, muy bien. <risa> eh, exacto, muy bien. Ah, un sombrero que cubre la cabeza, que cubre la cabeza, no, no dobla. It does not. Sí, no dobla. No, dobla. Mm -hmm. no, no se puede doblar un sombrero de, de, de paja de bambú, de bambú, uh, un sombrero de bambú, un sombrero chino de bambú. Hiciste bien, me gusta muchísimo. Ok. Uh, ¿Dónde fuiste en China? Where did you go to in China? ¿A dónde fuiste? Uh, just to Beijing. Oh, Beijing, ok. Muy bien. Ok. Uh, Gracias, gracias, Cynthia. Uh, ¿Alguien tiene otro recuerdo? Does somebody have another? I do. Ah, muy bien. Bueno, Trish, dinos, okay. tell us. You see this bowl? Ah. You see it? Okay. Sí, sí. <laughs> My notes. Uh, este bowl está de mi, mi vacación en Belice. En Belice? Belice, Ooh. sí. Can you see it? Um, el bowl es hace de rosewood. Can you hear me? Uh, uso mi bowl para mis controles remotos en la sala. Ah! Los colores del bowl son negro, marrón claro y marrón oscuro. Uh, me gusto este bowl porque me recuerdo a Belice. Elise, uh, y uh, tengo que buscar la palabra para uh, rosewood. Palisandro, palo de rosa. Rosewood se dice, depende de... Hay, hay muchos términos, hay muchas palabras para rosewood en español. Me imagino que, que depende en el país. I imagine it depends on the country you're in. Yeah. Pero palisandro, palo santo, palo santo, palo es stick. Okay. Literalmente. Si palo de rosa, palo de rosa. Um, jacaranda, jacaranda, ¿dónde? I don't know where. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you uh, would use that word. It does not give me which countries use those words. That's interesting. Es interesante. Uh, ok. Muy bien. Para los uh, controles remotos, for remote control. Sí, eso es. Es perfecto, ¿no? Es perfecto. Ok. Uh, ¿Alguien tiene otro recuerdo? ¿Anybody have a different one? Diane. Oh. Muy bien. Bueno. And it's Diane, not, no Laura, Diane. No. Uh, sí, veo. Laura, uh, Laura. No, no, no eres Laura. <laughs> La Quinta, you're on somebody else's account here. Yeah. I'm I'm back in Illinois. Oh, estás en Illinois todavía. In you Illinois. Still, I thought you were going to be back by now. Okay. Yeah. Cuidado con volar. It's careful with flying. Okay. Estas son mi canchas. Las oh, canchas. canchas. Cuando mis hijas tienen 11 años, mi familia viaja a Florida. Mis hijas, mis hijas uh, encontró las canchas en la playa de Sanibel. Mm -hmm. mm. Cuando mi nieto Jack tiene 11 años, él encontró las canchas en mi casa. Uh, a Jack le interesa uh, las canchas. Um, cuando él visite mi casa, él lee un libro de las canchas y toma, y toma una cancha a su casa. Mm -hmm. Ok. Bien. Uh, es muy popular, es muy popular con los niños mm -hmm. recoger, recoger, recoger es pick up. Uh, coleccionar. Conchas en la playa o, o recoger uh -huh. conchas en la playa. 
es muy popular con los niños, ¿verdad? Es algo que siempre a ellos les gusta hacer. Les gusta uh, recoger conchas en la playa. Porque mm -hmm. es buen recuerdo para los niños, ¿no? Uh, ok, muy bien. Y si se bien, you did well. Ok. Uh, eso es todo. I think that is it for that piece for now. Ok. Um, we're going to do a little reminder what we're going to seg into next. And I'm looking at my notes so that I make sure I do things in the right order I wanted to do. Um, we're going to uh, do a little video now to remind you um, a bit about saber and conocer. We're, we're, we're going to do a little bit of work with these irregular verbs again, but we're going to back up a little uh, to, to dip our toe in the water rather than jump, diving right in. And we're going to do a little review of saber and conocer. And, and these verbs we're going to work with today are the ones that do weird or irregular things just with the yo form, but often not with the other forms. And that's going to not be 100% true because one of the verbs we'll work with today actually does have a lot of irregularities, but mostly they're irregular for yo and not for the other forms. Okay, uh, so that means it's going to be uh, saber, conocer, salir, hacer, comer, um, uh, oír, okay? So we're going to do a little practice with all those. We're going to back up with saber and conocer because of all those, saber and conocer may be the two really, I guess, most important ones or two of the most, two of the top five, let's call it, most important ones. Saber, to know, conocer, to know, Okay, so we'll get into the why you have two different uh, verbs for those in a minute. We'll do a little bit of practice and then we'll dip into some of the, the other verbs. Uh, saber to know facts, right? Uh, information, conocer, to be familiar with, literally. And the yo forms uh, will be uh, for saber, just sé, and for conocer, Conozco, okay? This will be a good little video uh, just to, and we probably won't watch all of it. It's just going to talk about some good tips for why we use one or the other. Because usually people learn those forms, sé and conozco pretty easily, but it might be a little bit tougher for them to remember when do I use one verb versus the other, because it's like the ser and estar thing. It's easier to learn the difference than it is with ser and estar. Uh, but this will give you some background with the why. Around comes around in, Whoops. in Spanish, they have two different words for to know, saber and conocer. And these words are not interchangeable. They'll know what you're saying usually if you get it wrong, but you'll definitely be wrong. In this video, I'm not only gonna tell you all about saber and conocer, I'm gonna give you a trick you can use in the future whenever you encounter a similar situation. Hola, soy Jordan, and this is a Spanish quickie. Fast, easy Spanish lessons from somebody who speaks your language. Okay, saber means to know, and conocer means to know. That you know. I'm such a dork. If you Googled it or looked in a typical Spanish book, you'd see a bunch of rules about when to use which word. But instead of memorizing a bunch of rules, it's easier and better and less stressful and just more fun to sit back, relax, take a deep breath, and think about the words for a minute. I mean, it's kind of weird, no? One word can mean two different things, like I run on a track. I run for president. That's weird. The meaning of the words have nothing to do with each other, do they? But the words are exactly the same. But then there's to know. It's not as glaring as run, but know is used two different ways too. I know the answer. I know Tom. We've been using know both ways for so long, at first, to me at least, it seemed like it was just one word. But look at another example. I know math. I know 
Madrid. Those are two different words. I know math. I can do the steps on a piece of paper in front of you. They're facts. The answer? I can write it down for you. It's a fact too. But Madrid? Tom? I can't write them down for you. They aren't facts. When I know math and when I know the answer, I know facts. When I know Madrid or know Tom, I'm familiar with them. See what's going on here? Now I tell you, the word to know in English has two meanings in Spanish. Saber and conocer. Saber is used to know facts and conocer is used to be familiar with. We just normally say no for to be familiar with. Pretty cool, no? Words really are fun. So whenever this comes up, whenever there's a word in English that has two Spanish meanings, instead of stressing out about a bunch of rules, think about how the English word might have two distinct meanings even though it seems like one at first. That's just because we're used to it. Now when you think about it as two different words, it's not hard to choose the right one. But there's one more thing. Both saber and conocer are irregular verbs. Since both are so common, it really is a good use of your time to learn them both. But both are really easy. Just one change each. Saber conjugates like this. Notice the only irregularity is the first person singular here. Remember normally for an ER verb, you'd knock off the ER and add an O. But with saber, it's just se. So yo se is I know. No se is I don't know. Be careful, we haven't covered it yet, but there's a word out there, se, without the accent. Don't worry about it now. We'll get to that in due time. Just know that it's a different word. Se with the accent is I know. Se without the accent is something else. It means a few different things. With saber, all the other spots are the same. Sabe, sabe, sabemos, etc. Moving on to conocer, the irregularity is just in the first person singular spot here too. Instead of just knocking off the ER, you're going to knock off the C also, then add Z, C, O. So conozco. Then every other spot is the same. Conoces, conoce, conocemos. And that's it. In summary, saber means to know, as in to know facts, and looks like this. I know is yo se. Conocer means to know, as in to be familiar with, and looks like this. I know is yo conozco. Right now, I want you to do two things. Pop on over to gringoespanol.com slash quickies slash saber dash conocer. That link is also below this video. First, download a blank. Okay. Okay, bien. Uh, that's just promotion, <laughs> self-promotion there. So we don't really need, whoop, need that one as well. Okay. So those different forms. Um, and, and generally, um, this guy often has a lot of good hints. Um, you know, for those of us who say, well, shoot, when I look this up, I'm going to see a whole list of rules. It's, it's this long. I can't remember all of that. It is, and especially when you're speaking, it is really, really tough. You can't, you can't speak and have like, you know, a whole list of rules in your brain and now it's going to come out of your mouth. Okay. Um, so just memorizing a long, long list of rules isn't very helpful when you have to come up with it fast in speaking, but it helps to have like a 50-50 rule. And, you know, so if you're talking about being familiar with something, that's always going to be conocer. Uh, and you're generally familiar with the place because you have physically actually been there or you're familiar with a person. You're acquainted with that person. Okay, meaning you've actually met them. Uh, that will always be conocer. But knowing facts, knowing information is always saber. Okay? Our word savvy, S-A-V-V-Y, if somebody is savvy with technology, it means they are really good with it, right? That they are like super smart. Uh, that word savvy was sort of an English bastardization <laughs> of, of words that, that, pe that people hearing that word, saber. Um, okay. Muy bien. Um, the other thing that we use saber for is to know how, besides knowing facts, to know how to do something. So I'm going to show you some examples. And I hope, wow, I hope this shows up. Actually, I think I've got some examples as well. I've got to find my examples. I forgot to set them up ahead of time. Okay, por ejemplo. Oh, por ejemplo. Oh, I'm going to try to get this so I don't have light shining weird ways. Uh, Es una foto, es una foto de Tiger Woods. 
See, Tiger Woods? Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you some different ways we can use saber conocer. Yo sé, yo sé que, I know that. Que here doesn't mean what, but it knows, it means that. Yo sé que Tiger Woods es jugador de golf. Yo sé que Tiger Woods es jugador de golf. I know that Tiger Woods is a golf player, right? That's just information. Sé que es jugador de golf. Sé que es un hombre rico. I know he's a rich guy. Sé que es famoso. That's all just information. No conozco a Tiger Woods. I do not know Tiger Woods. I do not personally know him. I've never met the guy. Pero sé quién es. I know who he is. Sé quién es. Comprenden? Entienden? Entienden? Okay. Una cosita más. One more thing. One more thing. Tiger Woods sabe jugar al golf. Sabe jugar. He knows how to play golf. Okay? Sabe jugar al golf. Okay. Bien. Uh, es una foto. Whoa, I'm trying to get my glare off. Es una foto de Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps, no conozco a Michael Phelps. No conozco a Michael Phelps. Pero sé quién es Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps sabe nadar. Sabe nadar. He knows how to swim. Yo sé nadar. Pero no sé nadar como Michael Phelps. I don't know how to swim like, like he does. Él sabe nadar muy bien. Es campeón de, de nadar por todo el mundo. In the whole world, por todo el mundo. Él es el campeón de nadar. Bien? Sabe nadar muy bien. Yo sé quién es. Yo sé quién es Michael Phelps, pero no lo conozco. No conozco a Michael Phelps. I don't know him personally. Bien? Ok. Vale. Ah. Uh. Es una foto de George W., ¿no? Jorge, George. Uh, Jorge Bush, el segundo. <laughs> el segundo, ok. Ah, uh, bueno. Ah, uh, yo sé quién es George Bush, pero no conozco a George Bush. George Bush sabe montar en bicicleta. He is a, he's a bike, uh, you know, he, he rides bikes, yeah. Ah, uh, George Bush sabe pintar. Sabe pintar, he knows how to paint. ¿Verdad? Ok. Bien. Ah, uh, bueno. Pero no conozco a George Bush. Personalmente, no conozco a George Bush. No, no. Ah, bueno. Es una foto de Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift es cantante. Es una cantante, la, 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 es una cantante famosa, es bien conocida con los jóvenes. She's well known amongst the young folks, yeah. Uh, yo sé quién es Taylor Swift, no conozco a Taylor Swift, pero sé quién es. Ella sabe cantar, ella sabe cantar. She knows how to sing. Me imagino que sabe bailar muy bien. También. Okay? ¿Está bien? ¿Entienden? 
la diferencia un poquito mejor, ¿no? Un ejemplo más, un ejemplo más, un ejemplo más es Martha Stewart, ¿verdad? Es Martha Stewart. No conozco a Martha Stewart, claro que no. Uh, Martha, Martha Stewart sabe cocinar, sabe decorar, sabe coser, sewing, sabe todas las artes de, del hogar. She knows all the home arts, ¿verdad? Todas las artes de crear una atmósfera uh, interesante en un hogar, en a, in a home, ¿sí? Y sabe cocinar muy bien. Ok. Bien. Remember, I can use conocer also with places. And that place can be as small as a room, as small as a building, a city, a whole country. Bueno, por ejemplo. Um, por ejemplo. Sé donde está Idaho, pero no conozco Idaho. Sé dónde está. I know where it is. El estado de Idaho. Yo sé dónde está, pero no conozco Idaho. I don't know Idaho. I've never been there. Conozco Nueva York. Conozco Michigan. Conozco un poquito Florida. Conozco a uh, Nuevo México, conozco California, conozco España, conozco partes de México, uh, algunas ciudades de México, uh, pero uh, oh, conozco, conozco París, conozco Londres. No conozco Manchester. I have never been to Manchester, okay? Uh, those are big examples. It can be as small as this. Conozco, conozco una tienda de ropa. Conozco una tienda de ropa que me, que me gusta muchísimo. I know a clothing store, a store that I like a lot. Se llama Nordstrom. <laughs> Bien, okay. Uh, por ejemplo, uh, if someone asks you, ¿conozque, conoces, ¿conoces un buen restaurante chino? Do you know a good Chinese restaurant? ¿Conoces un buen restaurante italiano? Do you know a good Italian restaurant? ¿Conoces un restaurante donde, donde se venden hamburguesas? Do you know a hamburger joint? Ok. Uh, ¿Conoces un buen café? Do you know a good café? That, then that person is asking you if you know of a good place to get those things. If you have personally been there, not if you've heard about it, but if you've actually been there. ¿Está bien? Ok. Uh, Marilyn, I do have sí. a question. Sí, sí, um, dime. I might be overthinking this, but if I'm familiar with a place and I'm stating a fact about that place, where does that fit into saber or conocer? Okay. Uh, es buena pregunta. Depende de la situación. Dame un ejemplo. Give me an example in English. There we go. Um, let's say I live in Scottsdale and I'm giving you some history about Old Town Scottsdale. Okay, bien. Okay, por ejemplo. Ah, conozco Scottsdale muy bien. Conozco muy bien Scottsdale. I know Scottsdale really well. Ah, uh, yo sé que, yo sé que hay 
a uh, muchos lugares interesantes. I know that there are many interesting places. Uh, conozco un, un buen café en el norte de Scottsdale. I know a good coffee shop in the north part of Scottsdale. I just, I know of this place. Conozco un buen café en el norte de Scottsdale. No conozco muy bien el sur de Scottsdale. I don't know South Scottsdale very well. Por ejemplo, no? Um, if you're just giving facts, um, sometimes you may not even use that verb, no. You may say, there is. There is a good Italian restaurant on this street. Hay un buen restaurante italiano en, uh, en la calle Scottsdale. Hay un buen restaurante uh, italiano en la calle Shea. There's a good one on, on Shea. But if you want to say, I know of a place, conozco. Conozco un buen restaurante. I know a good restaurant. Conozco un buen gimnasio. I know a good gym to go to. Okay? Depende. Depends on the information that you're giving. If you mean I'm familiar with this place, conozco, I know. If you want to say you don't know a good place to go, no conozco buen restaurante por aquí. I don't know a good restaurant around here. Ah, aquí. Here's the difference. Sabes dónde está? Do you know where it is? Where it is is just information. Sabes dónde está? Sabes dónde está un gimnasio? Sabes dónde hay un gimnasio? Do you know where there is a gym? That's just information. Where it is is information. When it's open is information. But to know your way around that place, that's conocer. Es mejor? A little better? Yeah, okay. Uh, it, it can be a fine difference, but usually it's going to be, it, it's more cut and dried than said and said is. More cut and dried, not, not as many rules, not as many exceptions. You know, just think in terms of physically, personally knowing the person or being familiar with the place because you have actually been to it, conocer, right? Knowing facts, knowing information, saber. ¿Está bien? Okay. We're going to take a look at some other verbs that are also um, that are also kind of irregular, but different verbs that little by little, poco a poco, I'm gonna share a screen with you, poco a poco, little by little, you should get familiar with these verbs. We're gonna take a look at, real, and how they're used in context, which is more important. You can memorize a whole bunch of verbs, you know the conjugations, soy magnifica, wow, I'm really great. And then you gotta put it together a sentence, oops, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why would I wanna know this verb? If I, knowing the conjugation is one thing, but knowing when I wanna use it, that's es otra cosa, that's a different thing. Okay, uh, sentence building. So we're gonna take a look at some things with this. We're gonna take a look at uh, four different verbs today, cuatro verbos distintos, cuatro verbos distintos, four different verbs. Salir, uh, salir, think sally forth. Salir is to leave, and actually I should write that in here. Uh, salir is to leave as in to go out. Uh, and you know, there's another thing to think about this. Sometimes you leave from a place, sometimes you talk, use leave saying you're departing, right? This is why when you travel and you go into an airport, 
the word salida on a sign, salida comes from salir. Salida means an exit, right? Our departure. So a word in an airport or a sign in an airport that has the word salida, that means that they are departures, right? Departures because you're leaving from one place to get to another place. Sometimes we will use de after salir, and then it means you're leaving from that place, okay? It's the place you're exiting. Um, sometimes you're going to a place, and if you're gonna use uh, salir to say that you're actually, gonna kind of be leaving, like think think an arrow. <laughs> you know, if you wanna say that you're leaving to try to get to a place, instead of leaving from that place, but you're trying to get to that place, then you use para. So sometimes after the verb salir, you'll need de. Uh, sometimes, sometimes after the word salir, we will need to talk about the destination we're headed for. And in that case, we won't use de, we'll use the word para. And para literally means for, but in this case, it's gonna mean I have a destination, an end point I'm trying to get to. Okay, salir. Uh, salir de la oficina, salir de la oficina. Leave the office, yeah? Uh, we need that little word de. Uh, la mujer, la mujer en la blusa azul, la mujer en la foto que tiene la blusa azul sale de la oficina. La mujer sale de la oficina. ¿Entienden? She leaves the office. In English, we just say leaves the office. And... Eh, sí, en, en español, en español se dice, ella sale de la oficina, de la oficina, sale de la oficina. If I want to say I'm leaving the office, it's salgo de la oficina. Here comes the irregular yo form from salir. It gets the go ending only for yo. Salgo de la oficina, pero la mujer sale de la oficina. ¿Entienden? Ok. Bien. Los niños salen de la escuela. Salen de la escuela. Salen de la escuela. They leave the school. Okay. Salgo de la escuela. I leave the school. Salgo. Yo. La forma de yo tiene go, go, go. Salgo. Salgo de la, uh, de la escuela. Pero. Si, si hablo del destino, if I talk about the destination, not where I'm leaving from, but where I'm headed out for, the place I want to go to, if I'm thinking about the place I haven't gotten to yet, but I want to get there, then I need that word para. Uh, los padres salen para el parque. They leave for the park, meaning they want to get to that place that we know as parque, right? Uh, salen para el parque. Salgo para el parque. I'm taken off for the park. I'm leaving for the park. I want to get to that end place that is called parque. Bien? Okay. Otro verbo. Hacer. Hacer causa... Uh, causa confusión. This causes confusion. Hacer has two meanings. Uh, to make or to do. Okay, to make or to do. Make as in literally you are creating something. Uh, do as in, well, que haces? What are you doing? Que haces? What are you doing? So you'll hear I said in that question, ¿Qué haces? What are you doing? ¿Qué hacen ustedes? What are you guys doing? Okay. And in that case, do is a very general thing. They're asking you to define the activity. So a question like, 
¿Qué hacen ustedes? What are you guys doing? Might require an answer like this. Hmm. Uh, aprendemos español. We're learning Spanish. Estamos en clase. We're in class. That's what we're doing. Uh, comemos ahora. We're eating now. ¿Qué hacen ustedes? Ah, comemos ahora. We're eating now. Okay. Uh, okay. ¿Qué hacen ustedes? Ah, trabajamos. We're working. Okay. ¿Qué hacen ustedes? Would be a very general question. And it would require that you shift and put in a whole new verb to define the activity you're doing, right? We never use hacer as the do in English, that funny word do, like, uh, do you sing? Do you sing? That word do in English is just, it's a marker. Do has nothing to do with the activity of sing. In English, do you sing? Do serves to say, I'm gonna ask a question as to whether or not you can perform that action of the next verb coming up. Hacer does not function like that word do, do you sing? Okay. So, ¿qué uh, haces? What are you making? Ah, the yo form will be a go, go, go verb. Hago, hago. ¿Qué haces? Hago el desayuno. I'm making breakfast. Hago el desayuno. I'm making breakfast. Literally, I'm putting it together, right? Hago el desayuno. Hago el desayuno. Hago café. I'm making coffee. I'm actually brewing it right now. Hago café. Uh, hago la cena. I'm making dinner. Bien? In Spanish, you can use this with una pregunta. I make a question. It can be used to say, I'm asking a question. Hago una pregunta. I'm making a question, literally. But in English, we might phrase that as I'm asking a question. Hago una pregunta. And I may even put a little pronoun in front of hago, I make, to indicate who I'm directing the question at. Por ejemplo, okay? Te hago una pregunta. Te hago una pregunta. I'm asking you a question. Te hago una pregunta. Te hago una pregunta. I'm asking you a question. Le hago una pregunta. I'm asking him a question. Or I'm asking her a question. Bien? But, pero, uh, hacemos una pregunta. We're asking a question. Hacer una pregunta. To ask a question. Literally, to make a question. It might even physically be something like this with la cama. Make the bed. Okay? Make the bed. Uh, la mujer hace la cama. La mujer hace la cama. The woman is making a bed. If I want to say I'm making the bed, hago la cama. Hago la cama. ¿Verdad? We're making the beds. Hacemos la cama. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's move on. See words we would use with poner. Poner means generally uh, to put, uh, also to place, meaning you're setting something down on top of something else. Uh, it can also be used in this format. I'm going to put this off to a side. Uh, ponerse. You may hear it used with a se on the end. And in that case, poner means to put something on and uh, to put a thing on, like jewelry, like clothing, like perfume, to put something on yourself. That's a, actually a bigger topic, but just know you may frequently, very, very often, 
use poner with this little word say. Remember in that video, he talked about there's another word say without the accent mark? This is that other word. Literally means to put something on oneself, on one's body, on one's person, okay? So there are a few ways we use poner. Actually, there are a lot more ways we use poner, but the simplest ones to put to place, put something on top of something else. Okay, por ejemplo, poner la mesa, set the table. In the restaurant, if they have not yet laid everything out, you know, if you're waiting for a table and they need to clear it out and set out all the nice new clean stuff, uh, they might ask you, ooh, espere, wait, espere, wait, tengo que poner la mesa, I have to set the table, right? So, poner la mesa. La camarera, the waitress, la camarera pone la mesa. La camarera pone la mesa. Pone la mesa. Okay? La mujer pone las llaves. Llaves aquí. Llaves son keys. ¿Verdad? La mujer pone las llaves en la mesa. The woman puts the keys on top of the table. La mujer pone las llaves en la mesa. Okay? El niño se pone. Se pone means he puts them on himself. El niño se pone los zapatos. The kid's putting on his shoes. El niño se pone los zapatos. Se pone. Se pone. If you hear a se in front of pone, it means he's putting it on himself. He's putting the shoes on his feet. So, el niño se pone los zapatos. Se pone los zapatos. Poner is one of those verbs that's going to get the odd form, the go, go, go form for yo. Pongo. So if I want to say, I'm setting the table, pongo la mesa. If I want to say, I'm setting down my keys, pongo las llaves en la mesa. If I want to say, I put on my shoes, me pongo los zapatos. Bien? Okay. So, so far we've had... Salir, which gets the oddball yo, salgo. Hacer, which gets the oddball yo, hago. Poner, which gets the oddball verb, pongo, for yo. Go, 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 go. Here is another very common verb, but this, unlike the other ones, will get lots of irregulars and you'll see it a little bit later. Oír Es muy común. This one is very, very common. Oír es to hear. It does not mean to listen. Uh, to listen is escuchar. Escuchar to listen. Yeah. But oír to hear something. Just as we have hear, which is a more passive meaning in English, and listen, which is a much more active meaning in English. They too in Spanish have two different verbs. This also, by the way, you may hear, whoops, you may hear in this oddball iteration, you may hear it as a command. You may hear people shout this out uh, as a command. Uh, and the command you're going to hear actually will sound like this. Oiga. Notice it's not oigo. This gets the oddball go, go, go form for yo too. If I want to say I hear something, it's just oigo. But this command, which is kind of related, it sounds a little bit like oigo, but instead of having an o, o, o at the end, it gets an a, a, a at the end. If you hear oiga, it's somebody kind of like our saying, hey, or like saying, listen up. They want you to tune in to them. Oiga is kind of a, a, a marker thing. They want to get your attention and for you to listen carefully. Oiga. Uh, kind of like we would yell at somebody, hey, <laughs> hey, listen up. Oiga. So you may hear it on the street, 
that way. When somebody wants to get your attention, so I guess I'll write that in there, to get your attention. Oh yeah. But the yo form will be oigo. Another go verb, like salgo gets a go, like pongo gets a go, like ago gets a go. Okay, so what kind of things can I hear? I could say, and I'm gonna use the go form for all of these. Oigo los perros, oh, ooh, I really should make him one. I've only got one. Tengo un perro. Oigo el perro, oigo el perro ladrando. I hear the dog doing what? Barking. Oigo el perro ladrando. Oigo el perro ladrando. I hear the dog barking. Right? Oigo las sirenas de la ambulancia. I hear the ambulance sirens, right? Oigo la música del concierto. Oh, I hear the concert music. Not necessarily that I'm listening to it, I just hear it. Oigo la música del concierto. You know, maybe you're walking in the park, maybe you don't see el concierto yet, but you can kind of in the distance hear it. Oigo la música del concierto. Hmm, ¿dónde está el concierto? Where's the concert? ¿Dónde? See, ¿Sí? ¿Dónde, ¿dónde están los músicos? Where are the musicians? So those might be vocabulary words you might tie into um, all of those. And I'm going to stop for just a minute. Uh, ¿Tienen preguntas? Do you have any questions on what you've seen so far? Uh, sí o Marilyn? no? Marilyn, I just have one question. Sí, Nora. Um, going back to hacer. Okay, sí. Um, let me just get my note up here. You had, had, could you just repeat what you said about it does not function in questions such as, do you sing? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to put this in the chat box. Ooh, unless I can make, oh, can I make this work? Let me give it one more go. Oh, I wonder if I've got it here. I'm looking for my settings. I am supposed to, with sharing my screens, be able to use a whiteboard Ooh. and to use it with text because I am much faster. I, I am a terrible writer with the pen. Let's see if I can make this work. Wow, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for my command. Ah, cannot find it. There is supposed to be a text box. Okay, I'm going to have to abandon that. Um, I'm going to have to use the chat box, guys. Okay, uh, so I'm going to write some examples of how we use do in, in English. Do in English is a very frustrating word because often it has virtually no Real translation, no real meaning, except as kind of a marker word for a question. So I'm going to write you examples of that. Uh, do you type? Do you type? Um, do we have cash? Uh, do you do you dance? Do you speak German? Do you see that? In all those examples, do has absolutely, in English, nothing, no relationship to the word type, no relationship to the word have, no relationship to the word dance, no relationship to speak, no relationship to see. Type, cash, dance, speak, see, those are all specific actions. And when I say type, you know exactly what action I'm talking about, right? When I say speak, you know exactly what action I'm talking about. 
but do has no relationship to speaking. Do in all of those examples in English is a marker saying, I'm gonna ask a question. So in all of these English examples with the word do, I would never, ever, ever use the word hacer. Okay? So the mistake that some English speakers make sometimes is that they think they have to put the word hacer in there to ask a question. Do you type? Do you speak? In Spanish, we never say, do you speak with the word do, right? So I'm gonna take the most obvious example there with speak. Uh, somebody speaking uh, politely would phrase that question this way. Oops, perdón, I've gotta get my question marks right. Habla usted español. Habla usted español. Speak you Spanish. They don't use do. They don't bother in Spanish with that word do to mark a question. To signal, here comes a question. They don't use the word do. Okay. And, and so, uh another one do you see that the question do you see that would just take ver ve usted eso do you see that see you that but they eliminate that word do so we never use hacer in that sense of do in english does that make sense nora yeah okay do in Spanish is used for real actions. Uh, I'm going to type in the chat box another question. Ooh. My punctuation is what's slowing me down, guys. ¿Qué hacen los niños? What do the little kids? That means what are the little kids doing? Meaning, I don't know what they're up to. I want to know what action they're doing. ¿Qué hacen los niños? What are the kids doing? Ah. I need to plug in a completely new verb that's not hacer. I need to plug in the verb that defines the activity those kids are doing, right? ¿Qué hacen los niños? What are the kids doing? So here are some responses people might give you. Estudian. They are studying. Juegan. They're playing. Uh, preparan el chocolate. They're, they're preparing chocolate, maybe a hot chocolate, right? Uh, comen el al almuerzo. They're eating lunch. So I don't want hacer anywhere in that answer. ¿Qué hacen los niños? I want the actual activity they're doing. A whole new verb needs to come in to tell me what that action is. Does that make sense? Bien, okay. Entienden entonces. So, um, you know, that, that word do in English is, gracias, thank you for the thumbs up. That, that word do uh, functions differently in Spanish. Um, it, it does not signal, here comes a question. It can ask a question, but it doesn't signal, here comes a question, like, do you speak German? It doesn't do that at all. Okay, bien, vamos a ver. Let's take a look. 
Uh, and you know what? I am going to add on a screen. Oh, I don't want that screen. That's on. Um, game. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at just conjugations of some of these verbs. I'm going to adjust my fonts to make them nice and big so people don't have to struggle with any of this. Okay. Um, uh, a ver, a ver, a ver. Aquí vamos. Here we go. Salir, salir, salir. Uh, take yourselves off mute. ¿Cómo se dice la forma de yo? De salir. Salgo. 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 Here are our go, go, go verbs. We're going to start with our go, go, go verbs. Salir. Salgo. But that go will not appear any place else. So tú, tú will get sales. Sales. Uh, él or ella or usted will get sale. 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 <laughs> okay, salgo, but the go disappears when I go to those other new forms, right? Salgo, but sales, sale. Okay, uh, nosotros salimos. 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 Ah, ah, salimos. Sí. No es salemos, right? <laughs> ER and I are verbs, right? ER and I are verbs share the same endings, but they go their own way when we go into nosotros, right? So, mm -hmm. I are verbs like salir, we'll get salimos. It will not be salimos, salimos. Uh, vosotros, we do, not, uh, tight, uh, we do not use very much, of course, on this side of the Atlantic, but uh, para que sepan, just so you know what that is, is salis, and you will only hear that if you go to Spain, salis. And vosotros is just the you guys, the plural of tú, okay? That's why it's across from tú on the chart. And if I want ellos or ellas or ustedes, I use the form salen. Salen. Okay, bien. Sí? Vale. Qué fácil. Sí? Salgo, sales, sale, salimos, salen, salen. Okay. And the na, na, na always means a more than one person doing it, right? Emos, 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 that most, most, most always means I'm in the group, but I have people with me. I'm not by myself. Bien, fantástico. Okay, entonces, we're going to fill in, we're going to plug in some forms and see if you can figure out the forms we need for salir. Salir, to leave, to go out. Los clientes, the customers. We want to say the customers are leaving. Los clientes. Salen. 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 Los clientes salen. Exacto. Bien. La gente, people. Y cuidado, careful. People means more than one. But do you see an S tag down the end of this? No. So we're going to treat this like a onesie. La gente. Sale. Sale. La gente sale. Okay. I know. Gente is people. But la gente is onesie, right? Because there's no S at the end of it. Yo? Salgo. 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 Yo salgo. Tú? Sales. Sales. And the con tus amigos just means with your friends. I'm telling who is in the group with me. Tú or with you. Tú sales con tus amigos. You're going out with your friends. Or perhaps you're leaving with your friends. Tú sales con tus amigos. And now we're telling a time. A las siete, at seven. A nosotros. Salimos. 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 Salimos a las siete. Mm -hmm. Salimos a las siete. And here, really, tú is just a placement word, right? Yo is just a placement word. It, it's just a, your cue. People generally will not say yo salgo. It'll just be salgo. They generally will not use tú sales, just sales. They generally will not use nosotros, but those are there just so that you know what conjugation you need, right? Salimos. It'll be just salimos, usually. If they do include the yo, they do include the tú, they do include the nosotros, it's just to give emphasis to it. Okay. Vale. Muy bien. Uh, vamos a ver. Uh, 
let's take a look at hacer. Hacer. Y voy a, voy a cambiar. Eh, ok. A hacer. Hacer. Yo. Hago. Hago. And we always in a, uh, and ignore the H. We do not pronounce hago. Mm -hmm. But the go, go, go goes away when I go to the two form. Haces. 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 Uh, eh, para él, ella, usted. Hace. Hace. Bien. Ok. Uh, nosotros. Hacemos. Hacemos. This does not Hacemos. go to hemos, it goes to hemos, right? It's an ER verb. Uh, vosotros, we will not practice, but para que sepan, just so you know what it is, hacéis. Uh, ellos, ellas, ustedes becomes. Hacen. The na, na, na means more than one person. Hago, haces, hace, hacemos, haces, hacen. Bien. Fantástico. Okay. To make, to do. Ah, here is where I actually have hacer meaning to do. To do homework. Or tarea literally means just a task. A job somebody has to do. Tarea is never a fun thing to do. It's a job. It's a task. So we use it to say homework. Uh, yo hago. hago la tarea. Hago la tarea de español. Hago da, la tarea de español. I do the Spanish homework. Hago la tarea. Bien. La mujer ah, hace. hace las camas. She makes the beds. She changes out the sheets, right? She tidies it up. Tucks in the, the sheets, right? Okay. Ah, oh, what are you doing? Que? Haces. Haces. Que haces ahora? And really, I don't even need that word tú. Que haces ahora? Que haces ahora? What are you doing? Nosotros? Hacemos. Hacemos mucho trabajo. Oh, perdón. Bien. Uh, a ver. Hacemos mu mucho trabajo el sábado. We do lots of work on Saturday. I'm telling Quinn, right? Hacemos mucho trabajo el sábado. Ok. Está bien. Ok. A ver. Uh, oh, sí. Sí, sí. Dime. Trabajo. No an en el sábado. Ah, es... buena pregunta. En el sábado, no. Nunca. Never. Never. No. I know. In English, and this is one of the things that's hard for us to get used to. Uh, in English, we have to use that word on uh, for a day of the week. Uh, but. Uh, that word on disappears in Spanish. We only use the article, meaning the word for the. Okay. No. Okay. The and the name of the day. Okay. Um, trabajo. Uh, uh, or, or it might be a plural. Instead of el, it might mean los. los. Okay. Mm -hmm. Entonces, un ejemplo. Um, mm Hago mi tarea el lunes. I'm doing my homework on Monday, just this one Monday. But hago mi tarea los lunes. I do my homework on Mondays, all of them. So if I mean all of them, every single Monday, it's los lunes. If I mean just Monday, today Monday, el lunes. Bien? Es buena pregunta. It's a good question. Okay. Muy bien. Voy a compartir otra cosita. We're going to check it out. Okay. Poner, poner, poner. This is going to get another go, go, go. The yo form will be? Go. Pongo. 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 Uh, the tu form will be? Pones. 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 Uh, for él, ella, usted. Uy, un momentito. Ah! ¿Qué pasó? Wow. Perdón. Él, ella, usted pone. pone. 
Bone, right? Okay. And just like uh, we looked at that at that very first uh, pronunciation video with the Spanish uh, speaking folks having difficulty with English words, you know, we see phone and we, uh, your English brain wants to say silent E at the end of a letter. That is not going to happen, right? We have to pronounce all of the letters. Phone. Uh, nosotros, it's an ER verb, so it's ponemos, right? Uh, Vosotros, we do not really need so much, but I will put it in there just so you know, para que sepan, ponéis. And then if I want to make it a more than one person, but I am not in the group, it's ponen. Okay, vale, magnifico. Okay, a ver, okay. Poner, to put to place. Mom sets the table. Mamá. Pone, pone, pone. Pone la mesa. Mamá pone la mesa. Okay. I'm put el vaso, vaso is a, a glass, a drinking glass. Yo pongo. Pongo. Yo pongo el vaso aquí. Y generalmente, generally, I won't even use that word yo, right? Pongo el vaso aquí. Uh, la ropa clothing. En la bolsa, in a bag. Tú? Pones. 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 Sí, la ropa en la bolsa. Nosotros, and, and when you turn something on, we use poner for that too. Nosotros? Ponemos. Ponemos, ponemos la luz. Ponemos la, la luz, we put, well, we put it on. We turn it on. Ponemos la luz. We turn it on. Ponemos la luz. OK? Está bien? A ver, ok. Uh, we're going to leave oír for a different day. La semana que viene, our, our week that's coming up. Uh, because oír is kind of a different verb. It's a little more complicated. And it'll get into more spelling irregularity things that are kind of funky. So we'll leave oír for another day. Está bien. Ok. Son las once, we're at 11 o'clock. So we're at a good place to give it a rest for here. I am gonna come up with a little speaking thing for you to do for next week. I don't have that ready for exactly what it will be. Um, we're going to also, because we had a request, uh, el hotel, hotel. We're gonna do some hotel vocabulary okay. next week, right? Um, we are um, until, until we properly start up, and I mean properly with, you know, summer sessions, so until June 22nd, we're not going to take a whole lot of grammar-related stuff out of the book yet. We're going to save the book kind of stuff, uh, mostly for summer session formally. Um, I want this to be more kind of little speaking and uh, you know some vocabulary. We have a suggestion that, uh, or the request to plug in some hotel vocabulary. So we're gonna take that next week, uh, kind of a vocabulary session. And um, I will think of a little speaking chore, but, uh, or a little speaking assignment for you to kind of like the uh, souvenir thing. I just haven't decided yet exactly what it will be, but uh, I will work something in that will be not too taxing for people to give it a try. And then I'll give you uh, a my example thing to kind of get you started. Um, and I want you to ponder this. I don't know if you want to do it or not. Um, some people mentioned in other classes that when people give a little presentation like this, they would like to actually see the text written out. Uh, I have the ability, so in other words, to have like little subtitles mm -hmm. beneath, you know, or no, not beneath your head, <laughs> talking head. But in other words, for you to be able to share your screen, like I share my screens, and I have the ability to let you do that. So I want you to kind of ponder whether you want to be able to do that, uh, which means that you would have to feel comfortable enough pulling up a new tab on your computer 
and pulling up, you know, whatever you have on your little word processor to kind of show the, the words you're going to say. I don't think that's necessary to do, but some people commented that um, they kind of would like that so that they can follow along with their, you know, listening and, and visual cues. So that think also, about that would also help us. You could correct our there, well, grammar. Yes, there you go. You know, and that's something, right? Yeah, you know, if we can share the screen, then I could also go in and, and type over and work that. So that's not necessarily a bad, or well, wait, I might not be able to go in and correct, but I, but you would be able to go in and correct, right? Yeah, um, yeah and, and that's okay. So, um, you know, that might have some helpful aspects to that. So think about that. And if you're, if you are comfortable with typing and keep in mind, if you're going to do that and share it, you need to make it a really big font, mm -hmm. like kind of horrendously crazy clown, big mm -hmm. font. Um, so, you know, put it boom, way up there. So it's almost like, you know, a sign. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's what I need to do with my font. I need to pump it way up into the 20s uh, to make it visible to everybody. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll think of a, a, an easy, non-intimidating example, something for you to talk about. Um, and I'm leaning towards the idea of food because my other classes have a food thing going on right now. So a food thing might be kind of fun to talk about. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I am almost food obsessed at this point of my life. I, the, because I have to think of what is in my pantry. What do I have? Mm -hmm. I have to build up my pantry. Oh, good Lord, because I go to the grocery store once per week. My husband would order everything off of Amazon, but you know, there's a limit. Um, yeah. Sometimes I dream about what I would like to have that I cannot have. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be a food-related thing. I just need to kind of zero in and make it a little more specific. So, um, think food. <laughs> By later today, I'll have that uh, perfected, a little bit uh, better honed down. And um, that'll be uh, something to talk about for next week. Está mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, magnifico. Uh, sign up starts tomorrow, so uh, if you if you want to sign up for summer, please do so, and that begins tomorrow, eight o'clock, on their website. And same same exact class. Somebody asked which class should I sign up for. Same class you're in now. It'll say step two, mm -hmm. Spanish for beginners. Step two, same exact thing. And if, if you're challenged with finding where that is, it's on the website with Scottsdale, right? So, um, you know, it might not be showing up yet today on their website, but it for sure will tomorrow. Uh, magnifico. Muchísimas gracias a ustedes. Gracias. Gracias. Ah, muy bien. Sí. Uh, que tengan, que tengan, may you have. Que tengan buena semana. May you have a good week. Gracias. 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 Adiós. Hasta lunes. See you guys Monday.